I am making, we're supposed to be making 18 tiles for art, for ceramics. And basically they're four by four and we can do any kind of design on them. And we're supposed to have an inspiration. My inspiration is food. And uh, this is my worst one. I'm, this is my first one, so I'm just trying out the paint thing. Um, but this is supposed to be like a kiwi cut in half. But it's also supposed to be abstract. So if you come up to this tile and go, oh my gosh, what is this? You'll probably not be able to you know, understand what it is. And that's a good thing because that's what I meant for. I've always wanted to learn how to do ceramics, and I thought this is a really good way to learn in school so I don't have to actually pay for a class in college. And I get to create things on my own, and I, I love creating things and putting my ideas in a certain form and having those things and being able to keep them. What we're doing today, we're basically checking to see the effects of sunlight on the uh, process of photosynthesis. Uh, we can talk about photosynthesis and describe how it happens, but uh, to see the actual results of it uh, makes it much more meaningful. So what we're doing today is we're setting up four test tubes. Uh, one test tube uh, serves as a control, which you have in all good scientific experiments. The second uh, one is uh, we've extracted some chlorophyll from uh, some uh, spinach leaves and we're putting that in with the solution of buffer and water and we're adding a substance called DPIP. DPIP is a blue color but uh, in the process of photosynthesis, in the light reactions of photosynthesis, uh, DPIP will turn clear if photosynthesis is occurring. Uh, so we add that in the third and the fourth uh, test tubes we put in uh, chloroplast that also been extracted from uh, spinach leaves. But one of those we cover with aluminum foil, one we leave exposed to light. So basically what we're looking at is to see, see what uh, is necessary for photosynthesis uh, in that uh, uh, you need chloroplast, not just the chlorophyll and uh, also uh, the effects that light has on it. So by covering uh, and shutting off the light to the one test tube with the chloroplast, uh, we're depriving it of light. We'll compare that to the one that's open that uh, uh, it's exposed to light. Um. Uh, chemistry students were doing was uh, trying to find uh, they produced a new compound called magnesium oxide and they were in the process of trying to find out the uh, percent composition and molar masses and that sort of thing and it's a hands-on approach and that's one good thing about teaching chemistry and physics is 40 percent of our time really should be used in doing hands-on approach and what what's so good about that is that it puts the proper mental image in students mind as to what actually is going on and if you have a proper image in your mind it is easier to understand the concepts and so forth and that's essentially what our students were doing with this issue and so for this one we made the magnesium oxide and they figured out the percent composition found that it's molar ratios and were able to understand that whole concept anytime you start talking about moles especially in chemistry it's a lot more complicated for students and so if you have a hands-on approach if you're able to see what you're actually dealing with, then the students have a much better understanding of what's going on. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I really like the hands-on part of technical theater. We get up, we, we focus the lights, we run the boards, we build the set, and I just think that it really helps a student or anybody, myself, really learn it and keep it and absorb it and maintain that information by being able to actually work hands-on and not be so worried about just putting in your head and not 
feeding it back out. So I just think the hands-on part of uh, a technical theater definitely works much better um, in our case than setting out of a book because we get to put it to action.